Customers definitely are getting sticker shock. The cost of vehicle repair is rising, and there are several factors causing this. Heavier, more complex vehicles, new materials and manufacturing methods, a worsening shortage of talented technicians, and pandemic-induced supply shortages. We're at this, you know, almost inflection point where in a perfect storm, maybe a kind of analogy you could use where all of these different variables are kind of coming together at once to drive repair costs higher. The newest segments, such as EVs, are reputedly especially expensive to fix. News reports describe new EV owners shocked by repair bills. But some say there's reason to be optimistic. If cars are to be affordable, they must also be affordable to maintain and they must be affordable to repair. Else we're going to have fewer vehicle sales. So uh, I think the automakers are going to be motivated to drive those costs down. We have, you know, four technicians and two trainees right now. David Goldsmith has been in the car repair business for more than 40 years. He owns Urban Classics, a shop in Brooklyn. He says he's seen repair costs rise, especially over the last few years. Customers are, you know, struggling, uh, you know, to pay the invoices that we give them. I mean, I, I've had to cut back on our, you know, our profitability is not up. His impressions match data. Repair costs are rising relative to the overall rate of inflation. From November 2013 to November 2023, motor vehicle maintenance and repair increased 4.1% per year, an overall change of 49.8%. Meanwhile, all items in the Consumer Price Index increased 2.8% per year, or 31.7% overall. The increase has been especially sharp since the pandemic. Ryan Mandel is Director of Claims Performance for Mitchell, a software provider serving the automotive industry, primarily the collision repair and auto insurance sectors. He says the annual rate of increase in the cost of repair was between 3.5 and 5% prior to the pandemic, but since then, it shot up. In 2022, the number jumped to about 10%, which appears to have held steady since then. For the full calendar year 2023, the average repairable estimate was $4,721. Mandel says that number will continue to increase as the data matures over the next three to four months. I'm, I'm working harder than I've ever worked. And the margins, because you know all my expenses are so high, labor costs me more, insurance costs me more, you know, health insurance, uh, you know, uh, all, all the professional services that we get, everything costs more. An important distinction to make here, maintenance versus repair. Maintenance usually involves checking, replacing, or replenishing something expected to wear down or deplete over time. Your tires, wiper blades, oil, transmission fluid. Repair is fixing something that is broken. That can be due to a product defect, a clumsy hand, or what is often the case, a crash. Matt Moore is a researcher for the Highway Loss Data Institute, a division of the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. It's an organization funded by the insurance industry to crash test vehicles and do other research around collisions and vehicle safety. Moore says several factors could be to blame. It could be that vehicles are more expensive to repair. It could be that crashes are more severe. Cars are a lot heavier than they used to be and a lot more powerful. Between 1985 and 2022, on average, vehicle weights increased by about 33%. Meanwhile, average horsepower increased by over 100%. Vehicles are heavier when they're getting in the crashes and or they are going faster when they get in the crashes. You're going to have more energy in the crash. More energy in the crash means more damage to the vehicle, more damage to the vehicle higher repair costs. Meanwhile, in recent years, speeding and traffic crashes have increased. At the same time, the proliferation of what are collectively called active safety technology, such as automatic emergency braking, have reduced the number of low speed accidents. A lot of these features don't work or don't work as well at higher speeds. That has led to mean shifting, where the overall data set has become skewed toward more severe crashes, simply because less severe, lower speed crashes are not happening as often. Cars are also loaded with a lot more stuff, which means a lot more can go wrong. 
About 17% of the registered vehicles in the U.S. are turbocharged, a tweak that squeezes more power out of an engine. In recent years, automakers have used it to make engines smaller and more efficient. It adds a lot of extra parts, the turbocharger, plus additional exhaust pipes, an additional cooling system, and so on. The number of all-wheel drive vehicles has skyrocketed. In the 1980s, about 10% of them came equipped with it. In 2022, 66% did. All of these systems increase complexity and weight on an automobile, partly to compensate for the increased weight, but also to maximize fuel efficiency, performance, or maneuverability, a lot of automakers have increasingly used lighter weight materials. Aluminum is one. It is more brittle than steel, so it cracks in a crash instead of bending and deforming. That disperses a crash's energy better, but because cracks are harder to repair than, say, a dent, aluminum panels usually need to be replaced. New manufacturing methods like megacasting or gigacasting allow automakers to dramatically reduce the number of parts on a vehicle. A part of a car that might have been made up of 50 or 60 sheet metal pieces can now be made with just two or three very large ones. But again, that means when something breaks, a much larger piece needs to be fixed or replaced. Change doesn't stop there. Automobiles have entirely new types of technology in them. Your average regular car now is, is basically a a rolling network of computers. It's been kind of slowly developing for you know, decades now, but really we saw in the last 10 years the, the technology in vehicles changed dramatically to where you now had many different, not just you know, single safety systems, but many different safety components that were being added to these vehicles to help protect drivers and to reduce accident frequency. It adds up quickly. You know, we, we had a guy in with a Dodge pickup or a Jeep uh, the other day, and he's, his lights are going crazy on the dashboard, and he, and he had to decline the repair because it was, it was a, a radar built into uh, a, a little uh, sensor on his grill that got cracked. And you know, it was $1,500 just for part. And you potentially have to recalibrate these systems, even, again, even if they haven't been damaged. So we've seen that really ramping up significantly since 2015, the incidence of the presence of these different operations. You know, if you look at the average cost of doing a, just a, a series of scans of the computer system on a vehicle, you're talking about an average of about $160 per claim. When you talk about calibrations, that's more like $500 per claim. Over there in the corner there, we've got scan tools, you know, $10,000, $12,000, $9,000, you know, and then, um, you know, the training that's involved. Of course, we've got to send, send our guys out for training. I, I have guys that come to me that have been out of the business for five years, and it, they go like, whoa, where'd this come from? Finding enough talented technicians is one of Goldsmith's biggest challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated a long-standing shortage. In 2019, the average labor rate was under $50 an hour in the U.S. At the end of 2023, it was close to $60. Most of those increases came in 2022 and 2023. Well, when the pandemic hit, um, you know, all hell broke loose. A lot of a lot of people, like in a lot of industries, a lot of the older guys, uh, some gals, they just said, "I'm done." You know, I've worked you know 20, 30 years in a business. I the, the pressure's too much the volume of miles traveled shrink drastically during you know, the peak COVID months, you saw really the volume in repair facilities dry up. And so a lot of technicians left the industry and went to work for industries outside of collision repair, outside of the automotive industry. And to attract talent, to attract the technical talent, especially shops need to pay more to be able to get that, to be the employer of choice. And that's really driven a lot of these labor rate increases along with just the overall general economic environment. Goldsmith pays some of his techs six-figure salaries, and he is trying to train his own techs rather than try to attract those at the skill level he would ideally like to have. They deserve it, They every penny of it. Um, I wish I could pay them more, 
Um, they're, uh, you know, highly trained uh, and hard to come by. The pandemic also drove up the cost of parts. Mitchell tracks a CPI-like basket of the most commonly replaced collision parts. In one analysis, the prices of those parts rose from 0 to 4% annually from 2017 to 2021. Disruptions at ports, especially in eastern China, spiked the cost of ocean-going cargo. The average cost of moving a 40-foot container went from $1,200 to almost $12,000. In 2022, Mitchell saw almost a 17% increase in the average cost of aftermarket parts, compared with the usual annual inflation rate of 0 to 4%. The OEM version of those parts has increased a little more steadily, around 10 to 12% in 2022, or about 14 or 15 in 2023. One of the great promises of EVs is that their simplicity compared with gas-burning cars means they ought to cost less to maintain and repair. But they have come under scrutiny lately, as some owners describe being saddled with pricey repair bills, some totaling half the value of the vehicle. In spite of these horror stories, many industry insiders say the total cost of owning a car should fall as EVs become more popular. They use fewer moving parts, there's no oil to change, there are extremely simple transmissions. Wildly expensive EV repair bills may have less to do with EVs themselves and more to do with the fact that the ones on the market today are one, essentially luxury vehicles, and two are made by either startups or relatively young companies that do not have mature supply chains and service networks. It's very difficult to paint electric vehicles with a broad brush. There are Nissan Leafs, which are electric vehicles, which are relatively small and relatively inexpensive. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have the Lucid Air, which is a cost in excess of $100,000 and some versions of that vehicle make 1,111 horsepower. Some EV models have a nearly identical ICE counterpart. The Highway Loss Data Institute compared the costs of repairing those and found that EVs were just 2% more expensive. When you look at the total EV fleet versus the ICE fleet, there is at first about a 35% difference in repair costs. But when you drill down and compare the cost of repairing, say, a Kia Soul and Kia Soul EV, that difference almost disappears. What is left, Mandel says, is the cost of managing an EV's high voltage battery. That includes ensuring it is protected, assessing it for damage, and keeping technicians safe from the voltage. There can be several hours additional labor involved, including battery removal. For example, urethane clear coats that seal paint jobs are baked at very high temperatures, which is hazardous to batteries. For some EVs, battery removal could require up to five hours of labor. But a lot of this comes down to the fact that EVs are marketed as the vehicle of the future, and as such, often target higher-end buyers. In addition to their still new and rapidly evolving batteries, motors, and other unique tech, they're also loaded with a lot of the features often found in premium and luxury vehicles. The, the EVs are really at the forefront of that complexity revolution. The EV industry, is, it's in a nascent stage, so it's early, we're doing lots of learning. I think once it settles down and there's lots of learning that occurs in the dealerships, um, in the manufacturing plants, in the design houses, I think EVs are going to be a really terrific proposition for people long term.